So science is expanding, you know, unrelentingly. I mean, the possibilities of what we could know or could find out or could discover, just I'm tingling about them. I won't be here for that, and many of us in our present positions won't. But that next generation, those kids now coming into middle school, those kids now transitioning into college, those kids now coming out of college with opportunities, um, be they you know, what they are, um, the, it's really going to be an exciting time, a time of multiple intersecting scientific revolutions. The potential of IT and nano world and manipulating biology you know, to understand how it works, the piece apart where it came from, these are things we're going to see. I, th I think we'll realize in the next cycle of those smart emerging kids, those young girls and boys, women and men, I think we'll realize perhaps in, in a clear way that we're not alone or we weren't alone or some aspect of that. I think that's coming. How to recognize that, you know, other than Area 51, I, I'm kidding, but, you know, it is going to take talent. So, Really, I think it's unbounded. We've built a good foundation of stuff. We have some infrastructure, we have some learning, we have some great tools, we have new ways of, the, of communicating those. But now, putting those together and solving problems and communicating that and expanding that possibility space, it's gonna get exciting. I, I think the information age we are now in, in the dissemination of knowledge um, and the potential for computing power to add to the variables of what we've been doing for millennia, Will, it will be explosive. Um, you know, we may well be able to do things that are unimaginable you know, in 25 years that, that whatever. I like to tell a story because at um, one point I was at a meeting talking with um, one of the last two gentlemen to walk on the moon. Incredible guy, Gene Cernan, just amazing, uh, on a, from Apollo 17 in 1972. And, and he said, well, what are you gonna be talking about, Jim? And I said, well, you know, a mobile laboratory on Mars that we will be launching in a few years. He said, you know, in 1972, I never would have thought the course of exploration of other worlds would have gone away from the human boot on the ground with a spaceship going and coming home, as incredible as Apollo was. He said, and now you're telling me that a robot, 100 million miles away, under command by us, you know, with never whining or complaining about conditions, just trudging along, will be doing things that, you know, we could barely do in labs back on Earth. He said, that's amazing. He said, I wouldn't have expected that. Um, that that would be the course of how we'd go. And we had to invent it out of the learning from what he did, so incredibly, to change gears to do that. And that's how science works, you know, as we poke at a new problem. So um, the fact that one of our leaders and courageous types, you know, of, of unbelievable cap capability recognized that, I mean, to me, is amazing. And, and you know, the other story that's so great is we sent a fantastic telescope into space, known as the Hubble Space Telescope, with a optical challenge. And what did we do? We fixed it and made it better with people and machines working together. And I think that's the paradigm, at least in space scientific exploration of our world and beyond. That new partnership, robots and people and machines, IT, technology, solving problems together separating the variables to go where we need to go will open up the universe. And, you know, one of our jobs at NASA is to help that happen. And I think, I think the next 10 years we'll see that through missions like our Curiosity rover, like the James Webb Telescope, like missions um, to asteroids and other things. We will see that. And that'll inspire those smart kids. And if we can communicate it to them and hook them to want to go to the next step, the possibilities are endless. I mean, Science will not rest. We will be in a better place. And we'll learn to use this universe smarter for our own well-being. And that ultimately is the benefit of it all. I mean, it's beautiful. It's art in some ways. But, you know, the symphony of science is best when it makes the quality of our lives better.